Sorbets are absolutely delicious, but usually loaded with added sugar and unnecessary calories. Not to mention, these pints aren't just one serving, so those added calories will add to your waistline quick. In today's video, I will be showing you three perfect summertime sorbet recipes that are under 100 calories for the entire pint. Only take three ingredients to make, and once you have the fruit juice, take just 90 seconds to prep. And I suggest staying until the end of the video because I save the best for last. Let's get into it. For this, we will need, well, a watermelon. Making sure you get a good watermelon is important. Sweet and juicy watermelons usually have a deep yellowish slash orange spot on it from where it was sitting in the field and are dark and dull. Oh, and make sure it's seedless to save yourself some hassle. Wash it, dry it, and put it on the biggest cutting board you have. By the way, everything I used will be linked in the description below in case you want to check it out. Grab your knife and cut the ends off while trying to cut as little flesh or pink part off as possible. The pink part holds that that sweet, sweet nectar that we want. One of the ends will have less rind than the other, which I got on first try. The thicker side took me a couple tries to get down to the flesh, but I'd rather slice off too little than too much. Then cut your watermelon in half and put it off to the side. Place the other half flesh side down on the cutting board. Cut where the pink meets the white or the rind and try to follow that all the way down. Again, trying not to cut too much of the flesh off. Go around the entire watermelon until you don't see any more white, but if a little rind remains that's okay now start on one end of the flesh and make cuts every half inch to inch now a little farther apart is okay we just want to get them in smaller chunks that will fit in the blender then turn your cutting board 90 degrees and repeat the other way grab a food processor or blender and fill it up with the watermelon blend for about 30 seconds or until everything is broken down now if you can't fit all the watermelon in one batch which you probably won't be able to unless you have a gigantic blender dump your blended juice into the containers you will store it in then refill the blender. Personally, I love these containers because they are stackable and come in a bunch of different sizes, but you can use whatever containers that you'd like. Get all of your fresh watermelon juice stored and ready to use. This process will undoubtedly be a little bit messy, so once you are done cleaning off your workstation, grab one of your containers of juice, a scale, and a creamy pint. You will notice your watermelon has separated, so right before you pour it into the pint, give it a mix. Put the pint on the scale and weigh out 330 grams of watermelon, 120 grams of water, 20 grams of urethritol, and a half gram of salt. Personally, I love urethritol and use it for everything, but if you don't like it or have another sweetener on hand, feel free to use it. Keep in mind, every sweetener is different and has variable sweetness, so try your sorbet before you put it in the freezer. It should be sweeter than you would like because when things are served frozen, the flavor is dulled or decreased. Also, the half gram of salt helps bring out sweetness, so don't skip this ingredient. After everything is added to your pint, mix with a hand blender or one of these blender thingies I got from PE Science for about 30 seconds. You can use the full size blender or food processor to do this, but this means you have to use and clean a big accessory every time you want to make a sorbet. Once you have the watermelon pureed, a smaller appliance is much more convenient because it is easy to grab and go and can be washed in about 10 seconds. Add a lid to your sorbet and store it in the freezer for 24 hours. Now, I have done about 16 hours and feel like I got the exact same results, but Ninja says 24, so to be safe, you should do 24. The next day, take your pint and run it under lukewarm to moderately hot water for 60 seconds. And yes, I time it. I highly suggest you do too because you think you have ran it for a minute, but it's only been 30 seconds. Trust me. I am guilty of it. This process will almost completely take away any ice on the sides of the pint that may be left over that the blade in the creamy doesn't get to. Then take your pint, load it up, and let it run on the sorbet option. When finished, I don't even look at it and run it for a respin. However, let's see what we get after one spin. It is still very crumbly and doesn't look nearly ready yet. Load it back up and respin it. Once that is finished, you will notice the outside of the pint looks ready, but the middle is still crumbly and needs some more creamy 
loving. At this point, I found taking a spoon and using the backside to rub everything smooth and leveling it off again was the best way to go. This helps everything get combined and ready for the last spin. Respin one more time. When it's done, it should have a perfect sorbet consistency that reminds me so much of the best Italian ice I have ever had called Freddy's. Because they are so rich and smooth, it reminds me of its sorbet counterpart. Our sorbet has body, a super smooth mouthfeel, and is perfectly sweet with a punch of real watermelon flavor. Just an FYI, the water I initially bought made 15 pints and at $4 a watermelon is an absolute steal on a per pint basis. Let's move on to the dark horse flavor cantaloupe. Many of the steps are very similar to that of the watermelon, so we are going to run through this one. Wash your cantaloupe, dry your cantaloupe, and get your cantaloupe on a cutting board. Cut a thin layer off of each end exposing the flesh and then cut it in half. Scoop the seeds out of the middle with a spoon and lay your cantaloupe middle side down. Then carefully cut the outside layer of the rind off. Keep in mind, the skin on a cantaloupe is much thinner than a watermelon, so your slices won't need to be nearly as thick. When all you see is the color orange, cut it exactly like the watermelon and use your crushing machine of choice to get it down to a puree. I will use a food processor. While it's blending, feel free to enjoy the fruits of your labor by enjoying a slice or two of fresh cantaloupe. When your juice is ready, pour your cantaloupe into a container, then pour 300 grams into your pint along with 160 grams of water, 20 grams of urethritol, and a half gram of salt. Give it a spin for about 30 seconds to get everything combined and throw it into the freezer. After 24 hours, grab your cantaloupe ice block and run it underwater for 60 seconds. Lock it into place, hit that sorbet button, and then respin it twice to get that real sorbet consistency. Remember to level everything out with a spoon between the two respins. I now welcome you to the best cantaloupe sorbet you never knew you needed. By the way, if you want recipes like this that help keep the calories low while still enjoying your diet, I can help. Using my 10 years of experience and masters in exercise physiology, I write customized training and meal plans and do one-on-one -on -one coaching that is specifically tailored to you. So if eating the foods you love while losing weight interests you, click the top link in the description below. We saved the best for last, and that is strawberry. Grab a pound of strawberries, rinse them, and cut off the ends. I cut off as little as I can, which is just enough to get the root and leaves off. For this recipe, I'm going to use an immersion blender to puree the strawberries so you can see the plethora of options you have to get to the same final destination. After each strawberry is cut, throw them inside of your creamy pint which is already on the scale. Once we hit 300 grams, we will stop and add 130 grams of water, 20 grams of urethritol, and a half gram of salt. Put your immersion blender into the pint and puree it for about 60 to 90 seconds or until well combined. Put a cap on it and throw it in the freezer for 24 hours. As usual, rinse off the sides and bottom for 60 seconds, lock into place, and hit that sorbet button. If you look at the pint after one blend, you will see it looks pretty close to done, most likely because of the pectin in the strawberries, giving this sorbet a ton of body. However, it could use another respin, so lock it into place and give it a go. You will notice the consistency of this one is almost ice cream-like without any dairy whatsoever, and the fact that it's just under 100 calories is absolutely mind-boggling. At the end of the day, whichever flavor you choose to make will be bursting with flavor, the freshest sorbet you will ever eat, and you will know exactly what's in it. I highly suggest you make one and report back with your findings. In the meantime, here is an Oreo McFlurry recipe you might be interested in if you want a little more volume. It tastes exactly like an Oreo McFlurry from McDonald's, and the hundreds of people that have tried it agree. Until next time, deuces.